Welcome to the Investor Management for Self Storage Syndication webinar with the Storage Investor Nation. I'm your host here today, Dan Hanford. I'm also one of the managing partners of a group called PassiveInvesting.com. You can go to the website here and check out uh, the information that we have available. Uh, you can see our team button up here. You can click on Meet the Team and go there. And when you go to the Meet the Team section, uh, you can find out more information about all of our team members. And if you want to find out more information about me as well, you can go there too. Um, I won't spend too much time going over uh, all of my information in the background because uh, it just might take a little bit of time, uh, but I will certainly let you do that on your own time. And for some reason, it's kind of crawling here trying to go to the Meet the Team page. Uh, oh, there it is. All right. So here's our team here. You can click on my picture here, which is that top left one. And when you click on that picture there, there's a video that I did about my background. Uh, you can see there I'm, I'm married with my wife, to my wife, Danae, and then we also have three, uh, excuse me, four children, three girls and a boy, and uh, we reside and work and live here in Columbia, South Carolina. So uh, go there, find out more information about me. You can also, if you want to find out some of the current offerings we have available, uh, we do have a couple of funds available. We have a self-storage fund, which is obviously what this topic is today, where we acquire uh, you know, institutional quality self-storage assets and put them in our fund there. Uh, we have a $50 million fund that we've launched uh, this year that is going to be acquiring about 150 to 200 million worth of assets. So you can go there and check that out. We also have our real estate debt fund, uh, which provides some op options for you to be able to invest in a short-term fund where you can get your money back out within, within 90 days if you chose choose to, but you still get a nice, uh, decent return on that too. And of course, we have some multifamily offerings here as well. If you want to check those out, Ascend Waterly and Blue Water at Bolton's Landing. Um, and then if, if you want to join us on one of our future offerings, you can click on this little blue button, join the Passive Investor Club. When you click on that button, you can fill out the form and one of our team members will reach out to you, discuss your investment goals, and see if you're a right fit for our group. So you can certainly go over there and, and do that at any point in time as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to you is about the Storage Investor Nation Summit. You can go to storagesummit.com and find out more information about this event. It's an, uh, it's an online virtual event where we have live speakers coming in. Nothing is pre-recorded on October 7th, 8th, and 9th. And, uh, and if you're watching this after that date, then you can always you can still go to storagesummit.com to learn about the next event that we have coming up as well. We do these twice a year. So make sure you go there and check that out. You can also go down to the page and see the actual lineup of the speakers that we have and also the list of the topics at the bottom. Last thing I wanted to mention to you is about an event, a live in-person event that I have actually never done before. And I don't even know if I'll ever do it again. Uh, it depends on, on how this one goes, but um, this is a, a workshop that is called the a Capital Raising Workshop. There's going to be uh, uh, multifamily syndicators there. There's going to be self-storage syndicators. There's going to be medical office building people. There's going to be people from all walks of, of, of real estate that are looking to learn how to raise capital effectively and efficiently. And this is going to be a live in-person event right here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's going to be, it's only about just over two weeks away. Uh, it's going to be called, we call this, this is actually called the Capital Raising Workshop to be located here. It's only available for 30 people. So once we hit the 30 mark, we're going to stop, um, stop the landing page and, and cap it. Um, so you won't be able to register. But if you want to hang out with me and our team here at PassiveInvesting.com to learn how we've been able to raise hundreds of millions of dollars in the last few years, we'd love to have you there. You can see there that the early bird ticket, uh, we, only, we, are, we are only selling uh, uh, VIP tickets, right? Because this is going to be one where you'll have uh, an actual uh, workbook that you'll walk away from. We're going to have a VIP networking party at my airplane hangar. So we'll, we're, we're in the process of putting all that together, which is going to be really fun. Um, and we have live music, uh, 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 chefs coming in to, to serve us, and that's uh, going to be a lot of fun on Thursday night. And then uh, this is, and again, this is not an event that's going to be open up to, to hundreds of people, right? This is a very exclusive 30-person uh, event. And to give you an idea as to uh, the amount of capital that our group has been able to raise um, since 2018, in 2018, we raised $4 million. The next year, we scaled and went to $32 million. And the next year after that, we scaled and went up to about 60, 61 million, which was just last year. And year to date this year in 2021, we've already raised over $102 million for the assets that we're acquiring this year. And we're going to continue to raise more and uh, we'll be uh, a lot higher than that uh, at, by the end of the year. So 2021 will be a great banner year for us, uh, which has been great because each year has been a banner year. We think that's going to be the max. We just keep on being able to expand past that. So if you want to understand and learn how we have done things 
this is what I would recommend for you to do. Go to this event. Um, it's going to be here in Columbia, South Carolina. There's some great hotels around. Um, we're going to have a lot of time of networking and food and fun, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun as well. Okay. All right, so it looks like Martin has a question. Will the attendee get digital copies of all the information presented? As much as possible, we can certainly do that, uh, Martin. We haven't had anybody ask for digital copies, but um, if there's one that we give, avail give out during the event and you want a digital copy of it, we can certainly do that. It's usually not a problem at all. Um, but you can see today is actually uh, the last day for the early bird ticket for 3,000. Actually go up uh, tomorrow to 5,000. So if you want access to this event at only 3,000, you can actually go there and check that out. Um, I'll be there along with Ellis Hammond to be able to participate in this meeting. And, uh, and so love to have you there. Love to meet you in person. It's only for, um, it's only going to be for uh, 30 people. There's a link there in the chat box if you want to check it out. And uh, I will stop talking about it and move on to our topic for today. So sorry about that long introduction. I had a few events to talk about. And uh, I do apologize for it, being, for it taking so long. Um, <clears throat> however, let's talk about investor management for self-storage syndication. So I'm going to go over to my whiteboard over here. And I'm going to start drawing on it so you guys can actually see uh, what I'm actually doing. I'm going to try to keep my, uh, my, my chat box up so I can see if, if there's any questions that have come in. But I want to share with you a little bit about uh, this process um, this four-step process. So I want you to get out a piece of paper and I want you to draw to write some of this stuff down so that you can actually follow along with me here as we're going through this. So let me switch the screen share to the proper one. I'll say new share. We're going to go over here to my whiteboard. This should allow you to, be able to see this. So let's see. We're going to go over this four-step process. It's a four-step process. And because you're going to be looking at my rear end the whole time, I'm going to turn off the uh, the video there, but you can at least see and hear you as I'm walking around with my headset on here. So I want you to go out, I'll get on, on your piece of paper and, oh, that's actually a little bit too thick. Let me just clear this off just real quick here. A little bit too thick on this one. Let's go down to here. We're going to say investor management. And we're going to go into a deep dive on this investor management process at the event coming up in September uh, here in Columbia. But I'm going to give you kind of a rundown of, of, of what these different four steps are. And then uh, I don't have enough time to go into each one of these four steps. So uh, that's why I'm not going to go into them too much detail here. But number one was going to be the raising capital phase, right? So this is the raising capital phase. Number two is going to be the courting phase. It's kind of the courting phase. And then number three is going to be uh, securing capital. Okay. And then number four is going to be uh, what we call our ongoing communications. This is what we're going to be talking about. There's actually a bonus one down here, number five. Um, and if we have time, I'll get to that one. Um, but we're going to at least talk about this four-step process. Recently, I've kind of updated this so I can I actually have a fifth one on here now. Um, but the, the, the raising capital phase, let's talk about this real quick. So what's, what is, what, when you think of raising capital, you think about you know, bringing in money, right? And in, in my playbook, when I talk about investor management, when it talks to this, when it comes to this, this raising capital phase, this is really what I like to call the marketing phase, right? Or really, I might even call this more of like the awareness, right? The, the awareness phase. Some of the things that I talk about are about what we call our, in our kind of investor triad, where you have this investor triad. We're going to put this down in the middle here. We have the word no, like, let's just put it in here and raise this up a little bit. No, like, and trust, right? We have this no, like, and trust. And the most important one on here is actually no. <clears throat> and the reason why is because in order for people to be able to have the opportunity to be able to make an opinion as to whether or not they actually like or trust you, they have to get to know you, 
right? And if you if nobody knows you, then what does it what what does it matter if you are a likable person or a trusting person, right? It doesn't matter. You got to get people to know who you are, and then of course once they get to know you, they will like you and they'll get to trust you, and that's when they're going to start to be able to invest money with you, right? So let's talk about this again. So this is kind of the marketing and awareness phase. And that is going to be that portion there on this no like, and trust triangle, right? And then, of course, you have the courting phase. And really, this is really where you're going to have your content generation, right? You need to have your content generation machine pumping out content over and 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 over again so that people can now hear from you enough where they actually begin to like you. So this is kind of this phase right here, which is the likeness phase. The next step, number three, is securing capital. And this is when you are actually asking for the money, right? This is the money ask. So the, the raising capital is really, you, you don't know how much money they can, they can bring in. So this is really where you are raising awareness and you're trying to talk to investors and say, hey, how much money could you or would you invest if I was to uh, have an offering, right? or when I have my next offering. And so you've got to figure out how much money that is. And that's that raising capital phase, right? Um, and securing capital phase, I guess you could call that the capital call phase, right? I mean, that's really when you're going to say, hey, you told me you could bring in $100,000 to my next deal. Boom, here's the next deal. Can you, would you, are you interested in this one? And, and would you wire me $100,000 for this deal, right? And so if, if you've done a really good job of getting them to actually like you, then they will have transitioned over here to this phase and this will be an easy step as far as getting that money in. But the investor management piece here on securing capital is all about the money ass. This is basically saying, hey, I have a deal, I need money. And so the next step is gonna be ongoing communication. So after they've actually invested, so we're gonna call this post deal communications, right? How are you going to be able to communicate to your investors? How are you going to communicate to them about when you close, what to expect after closing? What are you going to do when uh, K-1 time comes along and they need their tax documents? What are you going to do for, for ongoing like, monthly or quarterly communications to tell them about the performance of the asset? So there's a lot of communications that can happen here. And if you do that really well, that's when that trust continues to build up even more and more and more and you get to raise even more and more money from those investors, right? Now, each one of these steps has, uh, each one of these steps has different nuances to them, right? And we're not gonna go into detail on each one of these things. I mean, raising capital, I could spend an entire, you know, a couple hours talking about different ways that you can go about raising capital, right? Obviously, um, We've done other webinars on this. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can type in there, you know, raising capital and you can find some of the videos about some list of ideas and marketing things that you can do to be able to raise some capital for your own deals. Uh, but that's really in that phase is like, what can you do? And whatever you do, you need to make sure that you are consistent with it. Because if you're not consistent with it and you stop, then it ain't going to be worth it, right? Because you're not going to be able to those people are going to see you and then they're not going to see you. Then they're going to see you and then they're not going to see you. You want investors to always be seeing you and you always be in front of them, right? Without trying to be a pest. So those, those are the four uh, steps uh, for the investor management process. And in the courting phase, this again is where you have your content generation machine, whether you're putting out podcast episodes, uh, whether you're being a guest on a podcast or you're, you are your own guest, or whether you're writing blog articles or you know, Forbes business articles or Forbes real estate council articles, or you're, you are, uh, uh, you know, you got a newsletter or something like that that you're sending out to your investors, some sort of way to stay in front of your investors because I see so many people that get to this point right here where they say, okay, I'm gonna spend a lot of time and energy and effort raising capital, right? Where they're actually building this awareness so that people are getting to know them, right? Well, guess what? A lot of times what happens is they get to know them and then they don't do this next step right here. They don't do the courting phase. So they get to know them, but then they never hear from them ever again. 
How many of you have ever been to an event, you were introduced to somebody, and then you never heard from them again, right? And I'm not just talking about them asking you to be an investor. I'm talking about you went to an event and you shook their hand and traded phone numbers and you never talked to them again. That's basically what these, these, these people do is they're, they're raising all this awareness and then they like never hear from them again until maybe six to nine months down the road until they have their very first deal. And then by that time, they're like, I don't even know who this person is. Like that you need that courting process, right? This is an important step. It's almost like the dating phase, right? Um, so this is like, I guess you could call this as, uh, uh, you can't necessarily exactly call it like this. I was thinking like, uh, the raising of capital here maybe is like first base in baseball. Then you have second base. If you do really well, then you go to the third base, which is the second, which is basically the, a different phase within courting. And then the, then the, um, then you'd be on third base. And of course, securing capital and wiring your money is the home run. Right. That's when you can actually get them all the way around the bases and, and actually uh, investing with you. Um, but the securing capital phase here is an, a very important step. And this is also a step where I see is where a lot of mistakes are happening. Right. Because in this particular process, this particular step, there needs to be a process where you can effectively and efficiently raise money. Right. So. Let's actually break this down here uh, real quick so you can actually understand, so you can actually see what this one is like, okay? So we're gonna break this down just a little bit. So the first thing that, one of the first things that we do is we are designing an OM, right? An offering memorandum, we're designing the OM. And once the OM is designed, then we are going to be sending it out to our investors. And this is gonna be in an email, right? And this is gonna be via email. And in this email, it's going to be our kind of deal announcement email, if you will, right? So it's gonna say deal alert, the deal alert email. And inside that deal alert email is going to be all the things that we like about the deal, the business plan. It's going to be a link to the investor OM so they can actually see and dive deeper into the actual deal itself. And it's going to have a soft commit form, which is very important. It's going to have a soft commit form. And in this soft commit form, you're going to ask them how much money, because you need to know how much money can they invest in this deal. And they, or do they want to invest in this deal? And then we also have them uh, a link to register for the webinar, right? Uh, register for the webinar. And then the third thing is going to be, once you have all this done, we're going to send the recording after the webinar. Send recording after webinar. Okay, we're going to send the recording after the webinar. And then again, we're going to include that soft commit form. And then we are going to go through, uh, after that soft commit form, we're going to send the PPM, the private placement memorandum. We send it via DocuSign. done that since the very beginning and I think we'll continue to do that. I know there's portals that can do it. We have a portal that can do it, but this is the easiest for us. We think it's the most effective and efficient way to do it with our investors as well. So we're gonna send the PPM via DocuSign. Then the investor is going to wire their money and we're going to confirm the wire along the process here. And we're going to notify them of closing. All of this information is important. And again, you can see that this is actually a process, right? This is, this is not just, you know, I've seen people, seen, seen groups, you know, before where I call them up two weeks before they're about to close on, their, on, on a deal and they're like, and I say, you know, they're trying to raise, you know, $4 million. I'm like, hey, so where are you on the raise process? Oh, we got it all, we got it all raised. It's all good. And I said, it's all good. Okay, so all the money's in the bank? No, 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 no. It's not, all the money's not in the bank. We've talked to our investors and they've all given us, you know, you know, commitments that they're going to invest. 
And I'm like, so I mean you have verbal commitments, but no money wired into the account yet. Right, right, right. That's right. But we, 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 we've talked to all the investors and they're good. And I was like, pause, hold on just a minute. You're, you're doing this all wrong, right? You need to have a process like this put into place to guide your investors through which steps to take to actually fulfill their commitment to you. You can't just get verbal commitments, right? You've got to follow it up with some sort of process. And there's additional things in between each one of these processes. Look at that. I even numbered them wrong. One, two, three, four, four, five. Sorry about that. I'm running a little bit too fast is what I'm doing. And, uh, and I haven't necessarily eaten lunch yet. So I was actually in the process of eating lunch and uh, realized I had to jump onto this. So apologize for that. That's actually number five and number six. I promise you, I do know how to count. Um, but we have these, these six steps. And there's different nuances inside of each one of these things. Like, I'll give you a quick example. Like right, here we right here, we talked about sending the PPM via DocuSign. Well, who do you think is going to do the PPM, right? This is going to be the attorney, but which one? you got to have your securities attorney in place, right? And so at which step in the process are you going to do this? Well, this is actually supposed to be happening at the same time as you're designing the OM. you got to have that being done as well, right? And of course, this is just for investor relations, but you also have other things that are happening along the way where you have your real estate transactional attorney. They're actually working on the closing of the deal itself. You also have your lender that you got to make sure that you're engaging with and you're getting your documents to. Um, you have all of your inspections that have to be happening along the same time. You can see that there's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes at the same time, which is why it's great to have a team that supports you and partners. And that way you're not getting distracted with having to do this stuff when you can just focus on you know, this stuff right in here which is uber important if you want to close, close deals. We were on a phone call recently on a deal that we're looking to buy and we're in, we, were in the, we are still in the best and final round and the seller keeps on asking us, how do you raise your money? And of course we're telling them about our track record, how we've raised over $102 million just this year alone. We've, our two most recent deals that we've closed are really large deals. One's a $91.6 million deal. We raised $32 million for that one. We're actually right now closing another one, which we've raised $27.8 million for that one. It's a, like a 80, I think it's like an $86 million deal, something like that. Um, and of course, this deal we're looking at, is, you know, pretty big. It's about, you know, 78, 78 to $80 million deal. Um, we're going to have to raise probably close to, you know, 23 to $24 million for it. And they want to, they're confused. They're like, how do you raise this much money from just retail private investors? And we're like, well, if we told you all of that, then you would be doing what we're doing, right? Um, but we did. We told them, like, listen, this, this is how we do it. We have a, private investors that we actually are raising capital from. We don't accept any institutional money right now at all. Um, our average investor is putting in $137,000. If you average it out from the last four years, it's $137,000 is the average investment. And they're still confused. They're like, we have a hard time from institutional investors trying to get that kind of money. How are you able to do that from just private retail investors, right? And honestly, it, it, I'm surprised with it every day myself about how much money we're actually able to raise and put to work for our investors. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're creating uh, you know, what we call legacy wealth for our investors, right? This legacy wealth where we're going to be building wealth for their family and our families for, for multiple generations because of the things that, that, because of the actions that we're taking right now. And these institutional people are confused. They're like, how are you buying these deals, right? Because we're, we're bidding on these deals next to these, 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 these publicly traded REITs and hedge funds and family offices and all, these inst all this institutional money, and we're getting these deals. And they're trying to figure out how, how we do this, right? Um, and there's some strategies that we use to be able to you know, stand out from you know, an institutional play or something like that. But again, that's not the topic of, of this, this particular uh, section here. But hopefully expounding upon that just a little bit on the securing capital phase is, what, what is good for you. And then, of course, you have this ongoing communication phase here as well, which is making sure that you have great communication with your investors. We actually get a lot of uh, investors that have invested with other groups. And they've decided not to invest with those other groups again. 
And the number one reason why they don't want to invest with them is because of poor communication. If you have poor communication with your investors, it's not going to be good, right? They don't want to invest with somebody that they they can't get a hold of right away and get answers to, right? They want to be able to call somebody or shoot over an email or send a text message and get a response right away. If it takes you days or weeks or months to respond to an investor, that's not good. You've got to have a, a process in place where you have great communications with your investors, but also trying to preempt communications with your investors, where instead of them having to reach out to you for questions, you are answering their questions before they even ask them, right? And that's an, that's an important step in the process as well. All right, well, let me go ahead and open it up for some questions and answers here. I know I've talked for about 20, 25 minutes or so. I'm gonna open up the, the floor here for some questions and uh, see what kind of questions you have regarding this topic. And, uh, and we'll go from there and wrap things up. So let me stop my share here, pull my camera back up and see if there's any questions that you might have regarding this, this kind of four-step investor management process. I know it was kind of a lot. It's a lot of kind of going at you all at the same time. Um, but hopefully if you've uh, enjoyed this content, I promise you, you're going to truly love the two days that we're going to spend on this, a day and a half, I guess, all day Thursday on September 16th, then a half day on September 17th. Um, you will really enjoy being able to spend that time. Uh, and if you take that time away and you, and you do that and you focus on trying to put a system and a process in place for investor management, things will go much easier for you as you continue to, to build your business and, and, and scale uh, but the first step you have to do is, is uh, be able to get that process in place. So if you want that link again, uh, Melissa, if you wouldn't mind typing it in for everybody, uh, the, the link to the workshop that we have coming up, the live in-person workshop, September 16th and 17th. Um, so I'd love to have you there and meet you in person and uh, shake your hands. A small event, only 30 people. Um, I wanted to make it exclusive like that. And it's right here in Columbia, South Carolina. So. Uh, doesn't look like we have any other questions coming. Let me just check my, oh, there's a Q&A box. I do have some questions in there. Excuse me, I forgot to check the Q&A box. Looks like it might be hidden behind something. There we go. One of the questions is, do we get, to, do we do, do we get today's recording after the session? The answer to that is yes. So usually a couple hours after the meeting, uh, we'll have it rendered and put up on the YouTube page and we'll send out that link to those of you who did register for the event, um, for, the, uh, for the webinar today. So you will get a copy of that. So a uh, good question there. Let's see. Could you go into a little more detail of the team concept and what specific roles those team members fill? When it, from an investor relations process, um, which, is, which is what we're talking about here as far as investor management, we really have three different positions that, that we have right now. We're actually getting ready to have four, but um, the, 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 the four positions, I'll, I'll just talk to you about all of them. So the first thing that we did in the very beginning is, is I really filled the role of the kind of investor, director of investor relations, if you will, right? I was the one that was making phone calls with investors, reaching out to them when we had an offering. I was the one following up with them and making sure everything was in place. As we continued to grow, the first hire that we had was in a kind of a, an administrative assistant on the, for, for me to be able to help with all the back office administrative stuff that needed to get done from investor relations, which is keeping track of the PPMs and send the, sending out the docu-signs for those, making sure that they're assigned and signed properly or filled out properly, um, making sure that the information was put into our portal you know, effectively or, or properly in, um, and in the right way. And then they were also, that person I also hired to communicate with the investors about when their wires had been received and you know, those types of things. So a lot of the back office administration is really what I needed. And then the next person that I hired was our director, actually, excuse me, was our, um, yeah, it was our, our, our director of marketing and public relations, which she's actually on the webinar today in the background doing some admin stuff for me as well, um, Melissa. So she actually is doing a lot of the design work and the coordination of the marketing. And uh, when we do the investor OMs, that's under her purview. She, she works with us very closely to do those investor OMs. Um, and right now, all these people are full-time with us. In the very beginning, did we have full-time people? No, right? It was just me and our two other partners, and they had different roles and responsibilities outside of investor management. Um, but my specific role was under that investor relations piece. And 
Uh, one of the people we did hire as a part-time person was the graphics person, right? We needed somebody to be able to help us with those investor OMs. I didn't want to have to hire somebody full-time in the very beginning. But as we grew, I knew we were going to need somebody to fill that position, fill that role. And of course, we have, we have that right now with Melissa, and she does a fabulous job when it comes to those investor OMs and all the other design work and all the other marketing and, and, uh, and, and kind of overall strategic marketing stuff that she actually handles for our group. And then the third position is as our director of investor relations. I hired somebody to actually replace me in that role. And so they are the ones that are actually making those phone calls. And they're in the process of building out our investor relations team where we'll have different strategic people placed throughout the United States and different parts of the country that can really have an impact on our investors in more of a local kind of a setting, if you will. And then the fourth person right now is actually in the process of being hired. It's actually kind of a, a marketing administrative assistant type person. And they're going to be helping alongside um, our director of investor relations, as well as our director, of, director um, of marketing and PR. So those are kind of the four main people that we have in the investor relations side of things as well. So hopefully that was a little bit helpful there. All right. Um, let's see. What systems will be used in the workshop? Um, and in future for us to use to manage investor relations. So um, I guess the best way, Hussein, for me to answer this question for you is, is that at the workshop, we are going to be uh, walking through all of the steps that we have taken here at PassiveInvesting.com to get to where we are today. And we started this thing back in 2018, went from $4 million in 2018 to $32 million in 2019. Uh, 2020, we did uh, just over $60 million. And this year already to date, we're over $102 million, which is really, really cool and really, really exciting to be able to say that. Um, but I share that with you because we're all, each year we had to do different things, right? We had to start somewhere. So when we first got started, that first year we only raised $4 million, right? And as we continued to grow, we had to change our systems and processes. I'm going to share with you at that event, at that workshop, all the different things that we did year over year and how we got to where we are today and how you can kind of duplicate that same system and do it. And my goal for you when you leave that workshop is that you actually have a written out plan for your inv specific investor relations process that you can implement the, 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 on Monday when you get back, right? Shoot, you could do it Friday afternoon because this is going to be a all day Thursday and then a half day on Friday. So Friday afternoon, you can start putting that system in place to be able to raise the money. And so we're going to be teaching you all those different systems and procedures and processes. And, and the other cool thing about being at that workshop is there are going to be other high level people just like you that were willing to pay the money to play in the game, to learn about investor management on a high level from a high performing team. And guess what? Now you can network with other people that are like you. So you can actually maybe partner with some people to be able to exponentially increase your ability to raise more capital for your future deal. Or maybe you'll be able to partner with them to raise capital for some of their deals. Right. So there's so many different opportunities here. And that's one of the reasons why we're, we're spending some so we're spending a good amount of money on this investor um, uh, kind of party on Thursday night at the airplane hangar where you'll be able to hang out with everybody from I think that the events that evening events to be from like seven to ten or eleven o'clock at night where you'll be able to have a lot of fun network we're gonna have a dj there we're gonna have lots of fun there um and i want and, I, and that's one of the things i wanted that to be is it's something that where we are, you can just, just let loose a little bit and enjoy each other and really start to create some connections and deep relationships at an event like that all right um let's see i have a question about the storage summit what tools offered are offered with the $100 toolkit add-on? That's a great question, and I don't have the answer for you right here in front of me, um, but I will have, uh, if you actually will email um, us, uh, you can actually go to, you can email Melissa, Melissa at PassiveInvesting.com, and she can fill you in on some of that information so you know what's actually included in that, um, and uh, that way she can share that with you. So, um, all right, so I don't see any other questions coming in. I want to thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to meeting you at the event coming up in September, and uh, also look forward to meeting you at the next webinar that we do as well. And also don't forget to go register for the Storage Summit. Go to storagesummit.com, and we look forward to seeing you there. Hopefully this was helpful for you and insightful, and uh, we'll actually see you back next week. Let me actually see what next week's webinar is going to be all about. Here it is. It's actually going to be, let me share the screen here if I can. There we go. It's going to be on how to get real estate taxes right for self-storage investing. So make sure that you go here and you check it out. Um, you can go to storageinvestornation.com to check out the next 
webinar that we are going to be doing. And uh, you can go ahead and register for that. That's going to be next Tuesday, September excuse me, September 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Looks like the timer hasn't been updated just yet, just yet but um, that'll be next week on September 7th at uh, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. So uh, make sure that you're, you're, you go for that. And also don't forget to go to the web, to go to the podcast. So you can go to the storageinvestornation.com, um, click on the storage podcast link here. You can actually hear myself and Chris interviewing successful self-storage real estate investors as we dive deep into the details on how they got their deal to finish and, and to the closing line and even after closing details too. So make sure you go to iTunes and you download that podcast. It'll be very insightful for you, especially as you're getting started. So thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you back in the next webinar.